What happens when we die? Um, we often hear people talking about we die, we go to heaven. We rarely hear people talk about people dying and going to hell. But exactly what happens when a person dies? I want to talk about that. Well, first of all, we have to understand that basically two classes, according to scripture, two classes of people, that is, believers and non-believers. Those who believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Son of God, that he came in flesh, died for their sins, rose again on the third day. These are believers, those who express faith in Jesus' Messiahship, okay? Believers, non-believers, that's simply the rest, those who do not express faith in Jesus' Messiahship, non-believers. So with those two categories of people, because those are the only two categories of people that die, believers and unbelievers, we'll discuss it. As far as believers, at the very death of a believer, of course, you know the body, and this is, as we're speaking now, uh, pre-rapture time in this 2021. The body goes into the ground, and when the body goes into the ground, an angel comes and escorts the believer's soul, spirit, into heaven to be with Jesus. Now, we learned th those two points from Luke chapter 16 when Jesus was telling of the story, not the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. Not, it was not a parable. It was never said in scripture it was a parable. It is a story. Jesus was giving us truths, okay, in that story form. But nevertheless, we learned that when the Bible said that uh, an angel came and escorted Lazarus' spirit into Abraham's bosom, we also know that to be paradise. But nevertheless, a believer's soul is escorted into the presence of Christ in heaven. Remember what Paul said. Paul was in talking to the Philippian church and Paul was saying he didn't know whether he wanted to die and go to be with the Lord or to remain alive and be with them. So the idea is to be with the Lord. So we know in Luke 16, as well as what Paul was teaching in the book of Philippians, that immediately upon death, the spirit and soul of a believer goes to be with the Lord. And there we remain all believers as we die, as we continue to die. We remain in heaven in spirit up until what is the rapture of the church. Now, I don't want to get into a lot of details about that, but you have to understand what what is meant by rapture of the church. The church is consistent of all believers in Jesus from the time of the ascension of Jesus, from the time that Jesus, he died and rose again. And after that 40 days, ascended into heaven from that point in time, all the way up until that event of first Thessalonians four. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the rapture. Okay. So only believers during that period. Now, say, for instance, all believers from the time of Adam up until the time of the ascension of Jesus into heaven after he rose from the dead. Those believers are not involved in the rapture because they are not members of the church. Members of the church are those who express faith in Jesus the Messiah after the ascension into heaven. Okay. But nevertheless, so those saints of God, those who have died already, they remain in heaven in spirit form alone. When I say spirit, that simply means without a body. There is no body. Okay. They remain there up until the rapture of the church. Now, once the church is raptured, that's when notice Jesus returns with the spirits of the saints, the church saints only, not Old Testament saints, church saints. He, Jesus returns with the spirits of the Old Testament saints, all right? And what he does is he enjoins the spirits, those people who are already in heaven, with their new resurrected body. And now they have a physical body. And this is what Paul was talking about 
in the book of first Corinthians 15, when he talked about how this corruption shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality and the seed that we plant, we will get something new that springs from that particular seed. So the dead in Christ, this is what it's meant by in first Thessalonians, the dead in Christ shall rise. So the spirits that Jesus brings along with him in the rapture, reunited with their resurrected immortal physical bodies. Those are new bodies. And those saints, church saints who are alive at the time of Jesus coming in the clouds, they will instantly be transformed. Remember Paul again says, we'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Okay. So the saints that are alive will receive immortal bodies immediately. And then we return back to heaven. Now, when the saints return back to heaven, the saints, all, and these are the church saints, you got to hold on to that, all in their resurrected physical bodies, then we have what is called the believer's judgment, the believer's judgment. Now, this is not a judgment to decide whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. That is already decided because you've been raptured and taken into heaven. The believer's judgment is what Paul mentions in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 when he says, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And that word that, that deals with that judgment seat is the Greek word bema, bema. So it is not the judgment to determine whether such a one is going to heaven or hell. This is the judgment of the saints for their works. This is the judgment of the saints for their works. Now, this is also what Paul was talking about in first Corinthians chapter three, when he was saying we need to be careful on what we do. That is how Christians live their lives, because all works, everything that we do will be judged before Jesus Christ. And remember, and always in all of this judgment, it is always Jesus and Jesus alone. We learned that in John chapter five. Jesus always does all the judgment. OK, but nevertheless, it is the judgment of the saints. And remember, Paul talked about the works. He said works will have different classes of categor cate categorization. <laughs> he said some will be gold, silver, precious stones, class in that manner. And then some will be wood, hay and stubble. And these are the things that we have done in our lives. Some things when held under the fire of Jesus's judgment, gold, silver, and precious stones, what are they? They are purified and they remain. Other things, wood, hay, stubble, these works that we do, the way we've lived our lives for Jesus. What happens under the fire of Jesus's judgment? They're burned up and disintegrated. And so this is when the saints receive their rewards, and this is what's going on at the judgment seat. The saints receive their reward for, for what they will exercise in the millennial kingdom. But nevertheless, let me just keep going. So after the judgment of the saints, after the saints have been judged in heaven, that is judged to receive their rewards that they will exercise, then we have what is called the marriage of the lamb. That's when we have the official wedding that Jesus marries the church. Remember all throughout scripture, New Testament scripture, we read how that Jesus wife is the church. Jesus is the head. Jesus is the husband of the church. OK, this wedding officiates takes place in heaven itself. And so um, after the wedding of the saints, OK, now down on earth after the rapture, remember, at some point we will have the Antichrist. And I don't have time to get into all of those details, but you see that in Daniel chapter nine. And you also see that spoken of in the book of Revelations all throughout. But the Antichrist will sign a seven year peace treaty with Israel. And this begins what we call the tribulation. And so the church saints will be in heaven all the way up until that time until the end of tribulation. And then all of the church saints return. And when the church saints return to heaven, 
they, they remember that reward that they were given that they talked about. Some saints will be rulers, kings and judges in heaven. OK, I'm sorry, not in heaven, on earth, because this is when Jesus returns back. This is what we call the second coming. Jesus returns back, sets up what we call the millennial kingdom, the kingdom of the Messiah, which lasts for a thousand years. All right. And so also we have a resurrection at the beginning of that. So when Jesus returned, there will be a resurrection. And now here is when uh, in the second coming, when Jesus comes back with the church saints, that's us who already have resurrected bodies. Remember, I talked about that. We got that in the rapture. But also when Jesus returns in the second advent after the tribulation period, he also resurrects. He brings the souls, of course, of the Old Testament saints with him who were not resurrected. Uh, Adam, Eve, Abraham, King David, all of these Old Testament saints who did not experience bodily resurrection in the rapture. They were excluded because the rapture is a special and a unique event and gift for church saints. OK, not Old Testament saints for church saints. So it's a unique gift for us to receive those resurrected bodies. But in the second advent, when Jesus returns after the tribulation, those dead Old Testament saints, the souls of those guys are therefore resurrected at that particular time. OK. And when that takes place, we have the resurrection of the Old Testament saints. And we also have the church saints who are with Jesus Christ already in resurrected form. Then we have what is called the marriage feast of the lamb that Jesus was talking about, that great wedding feast. And that we also see in the book of Revelation uh, 19, I believe it is. So, and this is just simply a celebration of the lamb and his wife, which is Jesus and the church. And these are the saints celebrating it. All right. Uh, the Jews who are present saved. When I say the Jew, I might as well say it. The Jews who are saved when Jesus returns and the Gentiles who made it through the judgment of the Gentiles in Matthew chapter 25. Remember the, the sheep and the goat, those Gentiles who entered the kingdom, they all will celebrate the marriage feast of Jesus and the church saints. Okay. And so we'll be with Christ for a thousand years. After the thousand years, we enter into the eternal kingdom, Revelation chapter 21 of God. And it is forever and ever and ever only the saved. So that's what happens when saved people die. In a nutshell, we in soul, we are in our soul form. We go to heaven. We come in the rapture. We get our bodies. Then we are judged and given our rewards. And then we return back with Christ in the kingdom of Christ, which is a thousand years. And after that, we in, then we enter into the eternal kingdom. All right. What happens to unbelievers, those who have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior? That is believing in his Messiahship, believing that Jesus is God in the God who was made flesh, died for the sins, rose from the dead. What happens to all others, which would be many? When a non-believer dies, his soul immediately goes to hell that is Gehenna, Gehenna, which is the burning hill. We also see that in the story of Lazarus that Jesus told in Luke chapter 16. And the unbeliever remains in hell until the great white throne judgment. So, for instance, let me give you an example. Cain, who was clearly an unbeliever. From the moment that Cain died thousands of years ago, Cain has been in Gehenna, burning hell ever since. However, remember the events. Let me put some events into place. Remember how it works again, that the events, eschatological events. Eschatological simply means last days. First, we have, starting from here, the church age. The church age began from the time that Jesus ascended into heaven after his resurrection from the dead to some unknown period of time 
up until the rapture. So whenever the, say the rapture, Jesus said, even the son of man, Jesus himself does not know when the rapture will come. OK, so but when the rap and no one knows the hour when the rapture will come. So need of, no need of guessing. So from the time of the ascension of Jesus to the rapture of the church, that's the church age. The next period begins when the Antichrist signs the seven year peace treaty. OK, with the Jewish people that begins what we call tribulation after the at the end of the tribulation, Jesus returns in what we, and, and sets up the millennial kingdom, the messianic kingdom that lasts for a thousand years after the kingdom, after the kingdom, Satan will be released from the pit for just a short while. And the ma mankind, he'll get mankind to rebel against Jesus in the kingdom. And then he will be destroyed. All of that, that the final war be destroyed. And that will be the great judgment day. So I said all of that. So you'll understand once an unbeliever dies, he goes to hell, the burning hell, Gehenna and stays in hell up until the judgment day. So remember the judgment day goes all the way till after that period that I just explained. So on the judgment day, the unbelievers, all unbelievers, because the judgment day is not for believers. There will be no saved people who rise in the judgment day. That's why the scripture says in Revelations 20, blessed is he who has part in the first resurrection because the second death will not have any power over him. It won't be affected by that. OK, the second death is being referred to as the lake of fire. But let me move on. Let me work this out first. So the unbelievers are resurrected. All unbelievers throughout the ages are resurrected. OK, those unbelievers who are alive at the time are given immortal bodies. And always remember, whenever we say use the term resurrected, it simply means to be given an immortal body for the soul and spirit of an individual to be placed in their immortal bodies. That is the meaning of resurrection, the final resurrection. I'm not talking about that temporary resurrection that we saw. Remember Jesus resurrected Martha and Mary's brother Lazarus. That is a physical resurrection, but that is not the immortal resurrection that I'm speaking of. I'm talking about immortal resurrection soul and spirit are placed into eternal bodies that cannot die anymore. So all unbelievers are placed in this resurrected body and that's body in their resurrected bodies. And that's when the books that revelation speaks of are open and presented and unbelievers will be judged according to their works. Now, uh, two things that would be the basis for unbelievers judgment. Light, which is knowledge and their deeds by knowledge. It simply means remember when Jesus says he who knew his master's will and did it not shall be beaten with many stripes. Uh, you remember that? And, and so uh, uh, to know better is to have greater judgment. And again, remember Jesus saying, woe unto you, Corrida, woe unto you this. He said, because if the mighty works had been done in, in, in Sodom, it would have remained even until this day. And so he said, but it would be worse for you in the judgment. So judgment would be is based on knowledge. The greater knowledge you have of Jesus, of, of the salvation that God has provided, the greater degree of punishment you will have. OK, as also and also the deeds, it depends on what you did. You can be unsaved, but you do more stuff. You do more bad stuff. So Hitler will receive a worse judgment than many. That's so on the basis of what you knew and the basis of what you did. Th these are the books that will be open for all unbelievers. And then finally, the unbeliever will be cast into the lake of fire. And this is the eternal place of punishment. And is the lake of fire is, dis is different from hell because the lake of fire is suffering for body, soul, and spirit. Remember, 
in hell, the unbeliever suffered in the soul. Only the soul of the unbeliever suffered in hell. The body was just simply on in the ground or wherever it was on earth, but only the soul suffered. So therefore in the un, once, even in the lake of fire thing, not only are the unbelievers cast there, but hell itself, because hell is a part of Hades, the underworld, Sheol, place of departed spirits. So we see that the unbeliever, when he dies first, the soul goes to hell and suffers in hell, a physical suffering of burning. We saw that. Remember when the rich man said to uh, Father Abraham, send Lazarus over here and let him dip his finger in some water and cool my tongue. He said, I'm suffering in this place. So the soul suffers in hell. They await until the end of the church age, the end of tribulation, the end of the millennial kingdom. And on the judgment day, they rise again in resurrected bodies just to be cast, judged and cast into the lake of fire, body, soul, and spirit for all eternity. And that's what happened when we die. But now let me give a final point on this concerning death. I've seen of many funerals. I've heard of many people dying. Very rarely have I ever heard, ever heard anybody going to hell. I hear about uh, murderers, gangsters, and at the funerals of gangsters, people are kissing up and, and that they went to heaven and, and, and saluting that I'm gonna see you up there one day. That is the most ridiculous thing and untrue I've ever heard the scriptures teach the disciples even ask Jesus and, and, and in principle, let me just simply give it to you. Shall there only just a few be saved? And Jesus bottom line answer was yes, only a few be saved. The gate that leads to destruction is wide, but the gate that leads to eternal life is a narrow gate all throughout scripture. We have heard of the term, the elect of God. We have heard of that term dealing with that seed of God. And so you keep hearing about these things in all of humanity as a whole. Only a few people will actually be saved. The majority of people will be lost. Where will you be? You know, in all of these discussions that we have. That's the, an that's the question you have to answer. Where will you be? Do you truly believe that Jesus is Messiah, son of God, died for your sins, rose from the dead? Because that's what it means. That's what it takes to be saved. What did Paul say? Confess the Lord Jesus with, with your mouth, believe in your heart, believe with all your heart, you'll be saved. That's what Paul said. If you, do you truly believe that? And James said, True belief, faith is always reflected by what you do. Does your life reflect that you are truly a believer in Jesus? Because it is true. One day, if the Lord delay is coming, we're all going to die. Where will you be? Will you enjoy the blessings of the believers and all of that wonderful stuff that I talked about? What happens with believers in death or will you go and suffer the penalty of hell? Think about that.